In our pre-service announcement reel this morning, we heard Carrie Underwood singing about baptism with images of water. Her repeated theme in this song, there must be something in the water because I am changed. And that's what happens at baptism. Baptism changes us. It's not the sky opening, Holy Spirit de descending, momentous thunder clapping experience like what happened at Jesus's baptism. And in fact, I've heard people who share with some disappointment that they expected more after they were baptized. They expected to have some supernatural experience when touched by that baptismal water. But it indeed does change us as we become publicly part of this larger community of faith, a place where we belong, a place to be connected to others who follow Jesus. In her music video, Carrie sings that after the baptism, she goes about her, her days and then realizes things are different. In these moments after baptism, the idea of being part of something greater than her hits her. At our baptism, we're no longer alone. We are one of many, we are connected, and we belong. Going back to John the Baptist and Jesus' baptism, a couple of scholarly observations. Remembering that John and Jesus were both Jewish and followers of Jewish ritual and tradition, they were already violating some of the rules of religious etiquette. Because in John's day, all spiritual events took place in that temple, the core of religious life. If you wanted to be part of the in club, you went to the temple. You didn't need to be baptized as a good Jew. So already we were seeing this non-conforming ministry of Jesus taking shape. John was preparing the way by creating a community committed to the kingdom of God and the kingdom life. Baptism was a visible rite of passage into this community. And these practices were a bit disruptive of the conventional and traditional religious practices of Judaism of the day. And that is a theme that would continue throughout Jesus's ministry. And Jesus entered right into that water. He asked for and received baptism right alongside all the people. He was one of the many in the water. And by doing this, he made it clear that his existence was about being one with the sinners and the broken. In this act, he conveyed that the kingdom is for the poor, not the rich. It's an expression of God's love, not judgment. Jesus is one of us. And God says, with you, I am well pleased. Many groups and organizations have requirements for entry. I'm sure many of you have participated in some. If you've ever belonged to a sorority or a fraternity, if you ever auditioned, if you ever had to demonstrate completion of academic requirements for a job, you were completing these requirements for entry. And by doing this, one is sort of demonstrating this commitment to that community, putting in the work, so to speak. Sometimes the process is one of gatekeeping, only allowing in those who are worthy, restricting acceptance to the few. In our age of diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI as the acronym, such processes used to screen are used to help ensure that the workforce is diverse and allowing fair and equitable access in theory. But what research is showing that such efforts miss the mark because one of the, the one characteristic not considered is that of belonging. It's been found that belonging is one of the most powerful predictors of longevity and commit, commitment to connectedness. To belong is important, not just being invited, not just being welcomed, you can have the greatest extravagant welcome in the world, but creating a place where people feel they belong is what's most important. 
In my travels over the years, different congregations, one of my recurring themes was this feeling of belonging or not. There were two congregations in particular where even though I participated, I contributed, I was present, I never felt I belonged. I was always sort of an outsider. I was always looked at as sort of the newcomer. And this was in large part, I believe, due to my own circumstances. I was single, I had no children. And these were communities that were held together by their history of family, children and grandchildren. In one church, there was this large core group that had been active since their early married lives. And now in their 60s and 70s, with grown children and grandchildren, their community was sort of a closed group, although they would never see it as such, but it sure felt that way. We had no points of commonality on which to base our belongingness. One of the first questions I was always asked was about my own family. And when I couldn't share details about my non-existent offspring, conversation sort of died. But finding a community where I belonged was quite a journey. Belonging cements the connection we find in these communities. Belonging allowed John's disciples to leave behind the cultural norms and expectations and follow this new direction. Belonging would be in that invitation that Jesus would offer his closest. Follow me. Be with me. Belonging compelled Jesus to enter the world as Emmanuel, God with us, and to enter the River Jordan and be baptized. And with the divine, this divine affirmation, those amazing words from God, Matthew's gospel tells of this public declaration, not in the temple, but in the water. And I need to offer an aside here that there continues to be some varying understandings of what baptism is about. Baptism is about affirming that connection, that commitment to be part of something greater than self. It's not some talisman that is necessary to avoid the gates of hell. No, it's invitational, just as we're invited to the table. It's an invitation to make a public demonstration of belonging to a community where holy love reigns. Matthew's gospel was influenced by the challenges in the church in that time, many similar to those we are experiencing today. There was conflict, there was division in this community of faith. There were some insiders, there were outsiders. There were religious and political leaders that were being co-opted, mistrusted, discredited. And the great majority of the common people were without power. Sound familiar? And cultures clashed. So Jesus's baptism was to be the beginning of this movement of renewal to counter those struggles and lift up belonging and relationship and connection as the most valued in the reign of God. Jesus enters the waters and we are invited to continually enter. The water refreshes and renews and moves and journeys on. Water expands and meanders and even withstands storms quite the metaphor for our lives. And as humans, we are ever in need of refreshing and renewing. When I first began discerning entering ministry, my leading concern was, but I just don't have that pastoral demeanor. I'm a little rough around the edges. I was reminded by, by many of my friends of the biblical characters and saints who also had their own share of stumbles and brokenness along the way. Teresa of Avila, by her own admission, was struggled with early parts of her life. Then we have David and St. Augustine. God is aware of our humanness and offers the rewind called forgiveness to get up, brush ourselves off, and keep on going, just like in the water. We move around those rocks, 
and we might even join in with other streams from time to time.